Okay, everybody. Uh, Thanks for taking the picture, group picture. Uh, it would be a good memory. I hope, uh, you know, after many years, I will see this picture. You share with everybody. We'll all know? be doctors. Share with others <laughs> the picture. Give the coffee, uh, everybody. Yeah, so uh, it's always, uh, you know, nice to have some you know, old memory pictures. Um, yeah, I have so many students. Some um, when I, I just started teaching, my uh, those students still I have connection with some of them, and some of them are now you know very famous doctors, and, uh, surgeons. So it's just nice to see them, you know. Uh, I started in a medical school, teaching in a medical school. So those students directly, you know. Anyway, so uh, we basically finished the reproductive systems, both male and female. Uh, I'll talk a little bit uh, about clinical conditions. Before that, uh, we'll talk about the menstrual cycle. As you know, two cycles take place in female reproductive system, right? Ovarian cycle inside the ovary and menstrual cycle <coughs> in the <coughs> uterus, right? That's why it is also called uterine cycle. Menstrual cycle is also called uterine cycle. So uh, inside the uterus, you know that endometrium is the innermost layer, right? And in the endometrium, I mentioned in last class, you have two layers. One layer is fixed layer, that is called Basal layer or stratum basal. Same thing. Stratum basal. And the layer that changes, that's the functional layer. So, what happens in functional layer? Functional layer grows on the stratum basal like this, by cell division. And that's why this part is called proliferative phase. Proliferation means what? Proliferation? Um, Increasing number, right? Increasing number, by cell division in this case. But sometimes we use the term proliferation in case of other things, like, you know, uh, proliferation of soldiers, so say in the battlefield, right? So increasing number. Makes sense. By multiplication, increasing the number of cells, this layer is formed. This is the functional layer, or stratum functional. Functional layer, or stratum functional. So this phase is called proliferative. Proliferative. the functional layer is built. And then, after the layer formation is complete, what happens here? Plenty of glands develop and get matured. So, a lot of glands are formed. Phase, right? Say again? Glandular phase? Secretory phase. Oh. This gland secret, right? You know that gland secret. So these are the glands, and we have a lot of blood vessels, okay? And these blood vessels are spiral, like this. Spiral arteries. Okay, anyway, so what happens in this part? A lot of glands are formed, okay? and glands secrete fluid. That fluid contains nutrition, okay? So a nice bed, this bed becomes what? Soft because of secretion of glands, makes sense? Secretion of fluid from the glands. So <coughs> this part is called the secretory, secretory, 
arbitrary things. Okay? And then, after secretory phase, uh, secretory phase is longer. It's like uh, almost double of this time. So it's, it's much longer. So let me draw it long. So this part is the part where the glands secret a lot of fluid and blood vessels, spinal arteries. Okay? And this proliferative phase, the duration is about seven days. About seven days. Secretory phase is almost double of that, about 14 days. And then what happens? These arteries squeeze very strongly. Spasm of these spinal arteries occur. And when the arteries squeeze, then what will happen? Tell me. If the arteries squeeze here, blood pressure drops. No blood will reach here. Make sense? So this whole layer will die. The tissue will. Die. Make sense? Yes. If no blood supply is there, tissue will die. And that will cause the destruction of this layer. Make sense? The tissue will break into small pieces, right? Arteries will be destroyed, glands will be destroyed. Everything here will be what? Destroyed. destroyed. Make sense, right? No blood is going there because of the spasm, squeeze of the spiral arteries. Okay? So what will happen? Destruction. Everything. Blood vessels will be destroyed into small pieces, glands will be destroyed into small pieces, the tissue will be destroyed into small pieces, and will disintegrate, will be, and get out from the body as menstruation. So this part is the menstrual, Phase. Destruction of the functional layer of the endometrium. Make sense? Destruction of what? Which layer? The functional layer of the endometrium. This layer is, will stay safe, fixed. Then after the destruction, everything is gone, but we only have basal, stratum basal. Again, proliferation will occur. Again, secretory phase will occur. Again, destruction will occur. That's why it is a cycle. Make sense? Okay. So, menstruation, the <coughs> secretion that contains the broken blood vessels, pieces of blood vessels. When blood vessels are destroyed, blood will also be released. Blood will come out, broken pieces of <coughs> glands, broken glands or destroyed glands, and tissues, other tissues. Okay? Everything together will get out from the body. Okay? And this phase is another seven days, <coughs> plus minus uh, one or two days. So, seven days proliferative phase, when the functional layer is built, then 14 days is secretory phase, when the glands are formed, get matured and secrete a lot of fluid. So, it's, it, this bed is, you remember I said that nice soft bed, so this is the nice soft bed, okay, it's formed by a lot of secretion, nutrition rich bed. And then, if fertilization does not occur, then what will happen? Destruction will occur. If fertilization takes place, then what will happen? It will, the layer will stay there. Make sense? Because fertilized egg, blastocyst will come, right? So, yeah, it will stay. So if fertilization occurs, this part will not happen. Make sense? This part will not happen. It will continue. So blastocyst will come, 
and you get implanted and you know that inner cell mass, this blastocell is the cavity, and from inner cell mass, the embryo will be formed, chorionic villi, like root-like, right? Villi will get in, and placenta will be formed from there, okay? So that is the menstrual cycle. Now, we cannot tell which, which phase is first, which phase is second or third, because it is what? Cycle. You can start from anywhere, right? You can start from secretory, menstruation, proliferative, or you can start from proliferative, secretory, menstruation, wherever you start, okay? Because everything is coming back, yeah, cycle. Uh, now, <coughs> The term uh, we use amenorrhea. A means absence, amenorrhea is menstruation. So, absence of menstruation. If that happens, uh, absence of menstruation. Uh, uh, if fertilization occurs, then amenorrhea occurs, right? Because no distraction. But that is normal. Make sense? If fertilization occurs, amenorrhea is what? Normal. That should have happened, right? Should not, menstruation should not occur. So, but in normal condition, uh, no fertilization, but that also can happen. Cessation of menstruation. That will belong to irregular menstruation. That temporarily <coughs> menstruation is, for some reason, uh, is not happening. That can happen due to uh, tumor or cancer in the uterus or hormonal change in the body. Okay, estrogen position on that hormonal change. You see here, this is interesting. You also need to know that during the secretory phase, here you see the hormone. Estrogen, progesterone, uh, particularly the progesterone level is very high. The dark line, that's the progesterone, okay? And the red one is estrogen. So during the secretory phase, which one is high? Progesterone is very high. So you see the hormone level is changing. Hormone level is changing. Then at the end of the secretory phase here, what happens? The progesterone suddenly goes down like this and that causes the squeeze of the spiral arteries remember i said spiral arteries will squeeze <coughs> what causes that the drop of progesterone okay so when that happens the arteries will squeeze destruction will occur okay and then you see in proliferative phase here the estrogen is higher than progesterone so to maintain the proliferation or proliferative phase you need mainly what estrogen high red line make sense and to maintain the secretory phase you need high progesterone okay and to destroy you need the drop of progesterone. So you see how always the hormones are changing. The level of hormone, the level of hormone is changing. And that regulate, that's why we say that hormones regulate the cycles. Remember I said at the very beginning, hormones regulate the cycle, right? The ovarian cycle is regulated by mainly pituitary hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, right? Luteinizing hormone, luteinizing hormone surge will cause the ovulation, right? You must remember that. So, but also estrogen and progesterone are regulating the follicular and luteinizing release. So, all these hormones, follicular stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone from anterior pituitary and estrogen and progesterone, right? These hormones are very important and they regulate both cycles, okay? So anyway, so you see here, which one is high during the secretory phase? Progesterone, make sense? 
which one is high during proliferative phase, estrogen. Okay? And both are low during the menstruation destruction. Anyway, so amenorrhea is no menstruation, stoppage of menstruation. Dysmenorrhea <laughs> is irregular. Menstruation. Okay. No menstruation. Okay. And uh, so those are related to this. A few other clinical conditions, uh, let's first talk a little bit about the male reproductive, male Many of you remember oligo, oliguria. <laughs> should all, all of you should remember, right? Oliguria. Oligo means what? Little, right? Less urine. That is oliguria, right? So oligospermia is what? Less number of sperm. Low number of sperm. Make sense? So if the count of sperm is low, That can cause male infertility. <clears throat> normal count of sperm is normal sperm count per ejection is 100 to 200 million. Can you think? Per ejection. Okay? How many? number, right? Egg is how many? One. Only one. Okay. So, use, you know, just a huge number. We don't need that many, but we do. If the number goes low, uh, that can cause male infertility. Why? Because when the semen with the sperm enters into the female reproductive system. You remember uh, fallopian tube, uterine tube, right? You remember that? This is the ampulla, right? Where the egg comes and the sperm go there. So only about 100 sperm can enter into the uterine tube. So only few, normally, like about 100 sperm enters, can enter into the uterine tube, right? So you can now think that out of 100 to 200 million, only very small fraction, right, enters into the uterine tube. Now if that number, instead of 100 to 200 million, if it becomes like 10 million, then there is, you know, very little chance that is sperm will enter here. Make sense? So that can cause male infertility. The number of the sperm that goes into the uterine tube or follicular tube uh, could be one or two or no. Make sense? So that reduces the chance of fertilization a lot, right? So that is one thing. That's why uh, we know uh, we, we test the semen under the microscope to see the number, density of the sperm in the semen. Uh,
azospermia. A means absence, no sperm in the semen. No sperm in the semen. We, I believe, talked about the abnormal sperm. Sometimes, what we see, the number is normal, but head and you know rest part are separated in many sperm. Some are attached, but many they are separated. So these are useless. Makes sense? They cannot move. Uh, or double-headed, or one head, two tail. We see these are abnormal sperm. Can they, <coughs> could they, like a double-headed sperm, could it fertilize? Yeah, if they can reach to the tube, filament tube, mm -hmm. they can do, okay? Um, so, uh, in that case, the, the embryo uh, may not survive because this is the egg, right? You have N, and if two-headed sperm, N, N, right? So when it will enter here, it will have three N, okay? So that will cause problem, cell division. It may not continue. Uh, <clears throat> you remember uh, inside the scrotum, this is the scrotum testis, right? And if you did that, means then what? Ductus difference, very good. Ductus difference or vast difference, right? Goes like this, arteries, right? Mm -hmm. uh, nerve, blood, veins, they also go with it. And this is a tube-like structure. That is the spermatic cord, right? Mm -hmm. So inside the spermatic cord, you have ductus difference, you have blood vessels, nerves, right? Those ascend. And then enters into the inguinal canal. The canal is there, inguinal canal, okay? And this is your abdominal cavity, okay, here. This is the abdomen, and sometimes what happens, the intestine, you know the intestine? Part of intestine, instead of going like this, can herniate it get into the inguinal canal. Make sense? It's like, you know, um, uh, hiatal hernia, part of stomach, right? So, part of intestine, <coughs> usually small intestine, can pop in like that. And that is the inguinal hernia. Now what will happen, you know, this is the ductus difference, right? And arteries and veins are here. So this will press the ductus difference. Make sense? that will block it, may block it. So in that case, for short time, until you remove this hernia, right, surgically, that will cause infertility, make sense? Because sperm will not be able to get out. Pressure will close the <coughs> ductus difference, okay? And sometimes uh, it can go far, very far. Sometimes it can press from outside too, like this. So part of the small intestine, you know, uh, protrudes out and press here. So all these are together, like, uh, all these belong to inguinal hernia, either. Okay. Inguinal hernia, that can cause pain and sometimes you will see those people lift weight a lot, right? Work, uh, like, you know, those work, works that lifting, you know, weight lifting thing, uh, task that can press the intestine, right? That slowly can cause hernia. Uh, another interesting clinical condition in male um, that is called, I don't know if you have heard, gynecomastia. 
last year. Have you heard this? Can you go last year? Anybody? No. Okay. So, uh, enlargement of male breast. Enlarged male breast. So it looks looks like female. Okay, so it's just funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> clinical condition, gynecho, nastia. Okay, uh, this uh, can occur due to abnormal secretion of adrenal glands, or, or because you know. Uh, adrenal gland also produces sex hormones, so that is uh, another clinical condition. Uh, undescendant testis. What happens when the fetus is inside the uterus? Fetus is inside the uterus. Uh, after seven months, after seven months. Uh, initially, the testis is formed inside the abdominal cavity in fetus. Testis is here. Okay? Testis are in the abdominal cavity in fetus. Then after seven months, what happens? The testis, they start to descend and enter into the scrotum. Make sense? Why they should descend? Why they cannot stay inside the abdominal cavity? It's warm. It's warm. Too warm. Very good. So, Inside that scrotum, the temperature is two to three degree lower, Celsius lower, okay? Which is good for spermatogenesis, you already know. So that's uh, why descent of the testis occurs. And if for some reason that descent does not happen, the testis remains inside the abdominal cavity, right? So that is called crypto Cryptorchidism. Cryptorchidism. Um, <coughs> Cryptorchidism, uh, in that case, if that happens, uh, sometimes people don't know uh, that testis is re remaining inside the abdominal cavity. Uh, and of course, in that case, um, in cryptorchidism, um, fertility, uh, infertility will occur. So those are uh, common male disorders, reproductive disorders. Okay? This is undescendant testis or testicles. Okay. Uh, many reproductive diseases are sexually transmitted. Sexually transmitted. Okay. Uh, so uh, some are infectious. For example, bacterial infection can cause uh, gonorrhea, have you heard this? Okay, so bacterial infection can cause gonorrhea, another bacterial infection can cause syphilis, so these are bacterial infections in the reproductive system and can be transmitted from one person to another. And uh, this transmission uh, mostly occurs uh, if someone has uncontrolled, you know, sex that like, you know, multiple partners, make sense? That, that uh, increase, increases the chance of sexually, sexually transmitted disease a lot, okay? So, uh, Cysts are pretty common.
common uh, in female reproductive system. Tumors or cancer also, that is also uh, common in female reproductive system, okay? Uh, cysts are harmless, non-malignant. It's a mass of fluid or semi-solid tissue. Uh, so usually uh, cysts are harmless, not malignant, okay? non-malignant. Uh, cancer, um, in some locations, ovarian cancer, uh, you know, cervical cancer, those are uterine cancer, right? Uh, those are very commonly heard in those locations, in the cervix of the uterus. You remember the cervix, the lowest part of the uterus, like the uterus is like this. This part is the cervix, so the chance of cancer is high here. Uh, the bacteria that is the main cause of cervical cancer in the cervix of the uterus that is called uh, human papillovirus. What human, human papillovirus? It's a virus that can, you know, uh, make the own home here in this area, cervix of the uterus, and if it stays for a long time, that can cause cervical cancer. Yes, human papillovirus. Uh, AIDS, another viral infection, um, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, right? Acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Now, <laughs> you, you remember when we talked about immunity, innate and what? Adaptive. Do you remember two types of immunity? Innate immunity, everybody by birth, right? We get, like a skin <coughs> protects our body. And adaptive is also called what? Acquired. Another name of adaptive is acquired. Like T cell, B cell mediated immunity. Right? That is produced in the body in response to any antigen. Okay? So the AIDS virus attack the adaptive or acquired immune system, like T cells, destroy the T cells. Make sense? So the person's if the immune system is destroyed by virus, right? AIDS virus, then the person's immunity, body protective function is very low, right? So multiple infection. They cured All them. kinds of, you know, infection will. They recently right. cured someone with AIDS, like recently. Like very recently. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we listen a lot of new discoveries when then, uh, you know, <laughs> some of those are proved later that not that effective. So, uh, yeah, so, but uh, suddenly we have developed some medicines, those work to boost up the immune system. Uh, Killing the virus is kind of difficult, you know. Killing bacteria is easy, but virus multiplies in a way that it's very difficult to, you know, invent and kill them. Uh, anyway, so AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, and the name of virus is what? You all know. HIV. HIV. Okay. Uh, so uh, that is. Uh, transmitted to the genes, uh, DNA, so it's just very difficult. It goes from parent to offspring. Okay, so uh, the last thing is twin. You know, <coughs> you must remember uh, Fertilization occurs here, so this is the fertilized egg, zygote. Do you remember that? Yep. Fertilized egg, zygote. Then zygote starts to multiply. Blastoblast, 
mares, two to eight cell, then morula, a solid wall, <coughs> then blastocyst, right? It has a cavity inside. Anyway, so if in the ampulla, two eggs are formed, usually one egg is released at a time, but if two eggs are released, then two eggs will be, sperm are many, right? Sperm is always, you know, uh, many. So two sperm will fertilize two separate eggs. Make sense? So that will make what? Paternal twins. Twin, uh, twins, and that is what? Called di? <coughs> zygotic twin. Make sense? Because two zygotes will be formed here, right? Two fertilized egg will be formed there, right? Two zygotes, that's why called what? Di, di means two, di zygotic twin, okay? And they are not 100% identical. They are not genetically identical because two separate ovums, right? Two separate ovums are fertilized by two separate what? Sperm, make sense? So they are not exactly same, di zygotic. <coughs> Sometimes what happens, one ovum, that is normal, one sperm, so one zygote will be formed, right? Single zygote. But when the cell division occurs, instead of one, two masses will be formed. They are separate. One cell and from two separate masses, two embryo will be formed. Make sense? And that is called monozygotic because coming from one zygote, right? During first cell divisions, early cell divisions, somehow they got separate. Okay? So two embryo will be formed, but from one zygote, right? One egg, one sperm. That's why monozygotic and it will be genetically identical. Make sense? Because coming from one zygote, right? Which one's more common? Uh, I don't know the number exactly. <laughs> That's a good question. I have to check it. Yeah, that's a good question. I will check it. Uh, now, dizygotic could be one boy, one girl, anything, or two girls or two boys. Make sense? Monozygotic will be identical, like two girls or two boys, not like one boy, one girl. Because genetically same, right? X, X or XY. So both will be same. X, either XX or XY name, okay? So, that's uh, how the twins are formed. Okay, now you check me and tell me which one is more. I need to know. Check in your cell phone.